Okay, hello everybody. Uh, thank you all so much for taking the time to join us this evening. I am really excited to cover the new construction duplex opportunities we have here in Central Texas and the special financing options we have thanks to the strategic partnership between Marshall Reddick and our Texas builder. So you're gonna find great value in our discussion tonight as most investors are seeking deals, right? Uh, this is gonna be a great opportunity to lock in new construction multifamily at a deal. So the topics that we're gonna um, discuss tonight, I wanted to just kind of go quickly line by line. Um, first, we wanna explain the partnership that we have um, with our builder and a little bit of the background there. Then we're gonna cover some of the inventory that we have um, and just to give you a little bit more information about the actual product. We also wanna kind of highlight the idea between the difference between conventional versus private financing. We are then going to go over what the special pri uh, private financing programs look like, the overall buyer incentives that are on the table, and then we're going to actually look at the properties on a pro forma so you can get that investor view form and you can see what you know down payments are going to look like, cash flows, and so forth. So um, without further ado, I wanted to to introduce my awesome team here. So my name is Vince Tomich. I am a realtor and advisor and I work out of the Newport Beach office here in California. Um, I'm also pleased to announce that I'm gonna be presenting tonight with Kian Oros, who is our boots on the ground Texas agent, who has um, you know, tons of experience with, the, with these particular uh, duplexes and born and raised in the area and has a wealth of knowledge for us. Also, it's our pleasure that Patrick Prenti, our director of private lending, is going to be on the call this evening. He has worked diligently on putting together some very attractive financing terms that are allowing these deals to really, really make sense for a lot of investors. So happy to have the team on board tonight. Thanks, Vince. I appreciate the open. Patrick Prenti speaking. My pleasure to be with you all as usual. And as Vince said, very excited to share details with you on this partnership that we've put together in Central Texas and the incredible value it offers to our Marshall Reddit clients. I do wanna make it very clear, however, that there is a lot of interest in this partnership, but there is a limited qualified inventory available for sale. If you want to use this industry creativity to your advantage and grab a deal at a discount, with a no cost to the buyer private loan, you need to act quickly. I'll echo what Vince said as well as we move forward. Appreciate being on the call with Kian, wealth of knowledge. He's gonna be speaking to us about what's actually happening on the ground. And I'm here in the Newport office with Vince. Thanks for having me guys. Okay, let's break down this partnership and I call it really a strategic alliance, right? This is in a strategic alliance between our duplex community home builders and Marshall Reddick's private financing division. There are three reasons that this partnership is possible. First, we have a seller, right? That's our home builder that's willing to make the contributions needed to make these private financing programs that we're going to discuss a reality. Second is a portfolio lender right? A non-conventional lender who's willing to accept these seller contributions needed to make these programs a reality. And third is the relationships. And that is the most important thing to me. And those of you on the call, you know just how important relationships are in life, but especially in real estate. Breaking down that relationship just a little bit farther, the Marshall Reddick presence in Central Texas is one of the main driving factors that we're able to put this together. Bottom line is that from a real estate brokerage standpoint, right, we work with this home builder quite a lot, right? We are the listing agent for a lot of their communities um, and we really take care of them in that capacity. They certainly take care of us the same with a good quality product. Then moving on to the property management side of things, right? we're the, um, the uh, property management for a lot of these duplex communities. right? So we make sure that they're well taken care of. 
right? And that is a benefit to both the, the builder, but also to our Reddit clients who are going to be utilizing these homes um, as rental and investment properties for many years to come. And now we're bringing in that third element, which is the private financing, which is the third arm of our business at Marshall Reddick. And we're really leveraging that to the benefit. And, and again, it's that presence and it's these three things together that are helping make this possible. Builder lender partnerships, these are, these are not uncommon, but we're starting to see them resurface more and more due to the government intervention in the interest rate market. Interest rates are a big deal. We're just getting ahead of the curve and we're leveraging our in-house financing to your benefit with a couple of pre-arranged seller contributions, making the loan opportunities that we're going to talk about tonight a reality. Kian, you there, buddy? Can you jump on for us? Hi, guys. How are you doing? Thanks, Pat and uh, Vince for having me and thanks everyone for showing up today. We're really excited to share through some of the options that we have and it's good to be in a time when you can actually uh, get something in the market, get something from builders and negotiate. So I'm happy to present uh, just a little bit about me. This is my fifth uh, year with the company. I you know, specialize in investment real estate. Uh, I've done about 70 investment properties in the last year. I've worked with this builder since I've started, both leasing, course property management and sales. So I'm really excited to present this option to you and uh, we'll get on here to the next slide. So this is Jordan Creek. This is our Seguin development. Um, we started in this development last year and we'll be ending next summer. We're in a really unique time where we have inventory that we can do specials on, which has been pretty unheard of with this builder. I really like these duplexes because they feel like single family homes. So if you're looking at it split through the center on this first image here, uh, the sizing, the elements, um, the features of the home all really feel uh, spacious and appealing to a lot of our tenant base. Uh, these get really good rents. Um, and uh, again, uh, all of these factors contribute. Uh, so if we go here to the next slide, you'll see a lot of these uh, features like luxury kitchen appliances, granite countertops, um, it's spacious, so it's 1,300 square feet, three bed, two bath. Um, the lot sizes in the yards are spacious enough, um, not too little, not too large. I always like to say that uh, tenants are not gardeners, they're not landscapers. So uh, having oversized, crazy huge lots aren't always beneficial, but having space for kids and maybe some dogs, it's always lucrative in getting those higher rents. Um, luxury vinyl plank, too, um, it's uh, about as um, uh, it's very low maintenance. So a, a lot of these builds are built so that it's very easy for you getting into the investment um, in those first 10 years. Um, so they have warranties on these. They have the 10 year structural warranty. All of the appliances are covered within the first year. Um, and then the tax rate for this specific area of Seguin is very low. Uh, so this is 1.9. A lot of Texas ranges about 2% all the way up to mid twos. Of course, when we're talking about real estate that you want to grow, um, our assessments are every year. Um, so, uh, you know, you can't really control where the values are going, um, though we want it to get higher. Uh, the rate really stays the same. So that really saves you a lot over time as the value is growing, but not getting the tax rates you out of control. Um, also, separate utilities on each side. So that helps kind of get the tenants uh, to pay the monthly utility bill and not have that burden on your back. Another thing that you know, as we go later in the slides and we show the numbers, it's going to save you a lot on cash flow. Um, so we'll we'll get here to the next slide. Yeah, okay, uh, Ken, I just want to add a comment there. Um, the separate utilities are super important as opposed to having um, some multifamilies that I've been involved in where you've got a single water meter and, uh, you know, or even worse. And the, the situation with the owner having to carry that cost as opposed to the tenant carrying that. So I think that that's a, a huge benefit. Uh, but I had a question, if you could answer this, um, are these homes going to be, you know, obviously really nice with a lot of nice features here. Um, will these come completely rent ready? Correct. So um, a lot of these, uh, usually and most times even with single family homes, um, there may be some Texas rental code items that you'd have to do on a single family home because it doesn't have to adhere because most of them are going to be primary 
uh, residents moving in. When you rent out your home, you have to have certain code items ready legally to rent it out. Being that it's a multifamily, all of those things are done. Um, again, it's going to be professionally cleaned uh, when you close. Uh, and then we're going to, you know, of course, um, handle the property management and leasing to get the tenant in there. So it's, it's all set. It's very turnkey. Um, you know, a, a lot of instances, if you're buying pre-owned or even new construction single family, you do have to put aside some costs for those rental code items, for a professional cleaning, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is, is very turnkey. So you just step into it and we work to get it leased and um, you're all set. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. So uh, why Central Texas? Um, so this is kind of an overview map of where a lot of our stomping grounds are in the state. So combined here, we have almost about 1,500 units total. This is one of our biggest markets for units under management. Uh, a lot of that cluster kind of falling in the lower half in San Antonio to New Braunfels. Uh, that's the more, most affordable price index and that has a really good base of tenants um, that keeps the investments very balanced. Um, this area is becoming very similar to Dallas and Fort Worth Metro. Of course, those areas are a lot closer, but as years went on and progressed, these areas kind of grew together. Um, further apart, Austin and San Antonio, but these metropolitans have boomed through COVID and continue to because it is affordable and the job core is stellar. So uh, Austin, of course, as many of you may know, has become more tech-based. Uh, we have a lot of companies, Tesla, um, Google, um, Apple, all moving uh, into Austin. And then San Antonio has long been a, a pretty stable course uh, in mainly being military and medical. So it actually has the biggest medical center, uh, Methodist um, Medical Center in the state of uh, Texas. Uh, also it has the most military uh, residents of any city in the United States. So that's uh, again, what keeps things very stable over there. Seguin, um, which again is kind of in between. So this is along the I-35 stretch a little bit south of New Braunfels has become big on manufacturing. So we have uh, Tesla has plans to move some manufacturing out there. We already have Caterpillar that has a big presence in Seguin. We have Tyson. Amazon also uh, is going to be developing um, a plant there as well. Um, and they also have a big one already established in San Marcos, which is very close to Seguin. So tons of great job core in this area that just continues to drive the price points up, up, up. Seguin kind of being in the mix of that um, is a great opportunity to get in. New Braunfels had a very similar story not too long ago, and people did miss that when we had a lot of the opportunities there. Um, but uh, Sakin is only about 15 minutes from South New Braunfels. So this is not far whatsoever. This is North Sakin, so it's very close. So this is the area stats for San Antonio historically. We're going back uh, about um, 20, 25 years here. So, um, you know, a lot of people are asking recession talks right now. I know I always like to say I don't have a crystal ball. None of us do, and we don't want to ever project what year-to-year -year appreciation is going to be consistently for the next 10 years. Um, but we like to look at the data because the past will always tell us a little bit more about the future. Uh, as I mentioned previously, San Antonio being historically, uh, you know, medical, uh, government, and um, military, that job core is um, it's very firm and uh, it doesn't fluctuate as much as some of these other markets. Higher price points like Phoenix, Dallas, uh, Denver, Miami, uh, the, the top California markets, those ones waver more on a lot of these fronts during a recession. So if you look at the figure 2008 to 2009, very small dip than what a lot of the country experienced through that time. Uh, of course, uh, you know, if you bought uh, at that price point then uh, for good financing, uh, of course, three to four years later, uh, you would recoup very easy. Um, and those are some of the best times to get into the market. Um, you know, so this kind of shows you the stability of San Antonio in comp comparison to some of our other mar markets. You can look on our website and always compare, um, you know, Austin to Dallas. And we have, uh, you know, more than a dozen up there that you can kind of check the stats over time. And Kean, just to jump in, um, just from a personal note, you know, um, just, just to kind of share with everybody on the call, Kean actually helped me acquire a duplex in New Braunfels. And it's been um, just 
amazing from you know acquisition and <clears throat> I, I i do own a few other single families across the country and i can tell you that um the stability that the you know san antonio metropolitan area offers has been incredible in terms of just the the consistency of growth and appreciation over the even the shorter period of time that i've had the property but not only that is the tenant quality has been um awesome uh, no problems there it was easy to rent um you know at the time it was you know above market rents and things are just moving really smooth so i'm really happy um, to see this kind of history behind the market and to assume you know very similar projections moving forward as as an as an advisor here i i work with a, i work in a lot of other markets as well and what i could tell you is this consistency is not across the country um what you're seeing here on the right side um like akian pointed out in 2008 or 9 this is a you know a negligible uh, variance here where some markets suffered double digit losses and uh, took a while to recover. So it's great to see this kind of consistency through the market. Yeah, it, it, I'll comment as well that, um, you know, Marshall Reddick really is all about practicing what we preach. Most of our staff um, are rental property owners, um, many in Central Texas. And I just think that that goes such a long way uh, in terms of, you know, credibility and uh, believing in, in what we do day in and day out. And um, I just, I appreciate that working for a company with, with that type of mentality. Yeah, so thanks for you both to, um, you know, commenting. Definitely. Kian, let's hear some more about what's actually available. Yeah, definitely. So if you wanna get to the next slide here, We'll go over uh, what inventory we have currently right now. So these are the ones covered in the current special that we have for the end of the year. So these are um, available to close end of December through early January. These are the price points that we currently have. Uh, this is within the last um, phase of the community. So this is about 80 duplexes for the uh, community. Um, and we are about uh, 35 left. So we're in that last phase. Uh, we only have a few of the one stories left and the uh, four two stories. So the one stories do a little bit better um, for leasing a little bit quicker, but consistently on each, they lease at the same rate. Uh, you get a little bit of discount on the two story pricing. Um, we can offer 10,000 price reduction if you contract by Christmas. So these are the last few that we have. Um, and this is our special uh, right now. Uh, otherwise, you know, we will not be doing the 10,000 um, for the next set that we have coming February and March. Um, this is in addition to some of the other, um, you know, special private private financing deals that we currently have. Um, so this is a really good, you know, way to get in. Um, you know, if you're closing end of December into January, um, this is a good time because the hardest time for leasing is usually December. So if you're through the escrow period of that time and you're going into the new year, things start to pick up after that point. So kind of the dead zone for a lot of leasing. Uh, what we see is kind of uh, right around Halloween, so end of October uh, to the new year. Um, so if you're getting to lock this in right now, uh, the price point, the private lending program, um, some of the other incentives that we'll get into here shortly, along with uh, you know closing escrow, right after the new year you're skipping out on all the holidays which is a lower leasing time and getting straight into the new year um, we're also doing free leasing on these as well so you also do not have to uh, incur a leasing fee um, for that yeah we'll, we'll jump into uh, all the incentives offered here shortly but that's an excellent opportunity to grab a deal right here at year end uh, with the final close out of this phase at jordan's creek Awesome. Okay, guys, this is Vince here again. <clears throat> so I wanted to uh, quickly cover conventional lending versus private lending. Okay, so um, prior to my role as an advisor, I was a mortgage lender for um, just over four years. And I have, you know, a, a fair amount of experience in the conventional space and um, definitely work very closely with our conventional lender. Our conventional lender is Reed Hazard from CMG Financial and does an amazing job, best in the business. And what I wanted to quickly cover is just the kind of differences between, between the two. So while there are many factors that make these options different, the big picture is 
conventional lending is based on the individual. And what I mean by that is conventional lenders focus on credit score, income, debt, debt to income ratios, things of that nature, more on the borrower. Private lending, on the other hand, which is what Marshall Reddick is offering, is asset-based lending. So we want to ensure that the down payment is sufficient and that the property can cash flow. Very simple, very straightforward, and it's just a much different experience going through each of those channels. Okay, guys, so right here you're going to see a side-by-side -side comparison to show you what you can get at no cost to the buyer given the allowable seller contributions. So starting from the top, you're going to see the same LTV or loan to value ratio, right? So that's assuming a 30% down payment. On the conventional side, you're going to see a rate of 6.25, where on the private lending side, you're going to see a rate of 5.25. You're going to see the associated principal and interest payment uh, down below here, assuming it's a $350,000 loan amount, which is you know the, the acquisition price that we, we have advertised. Um, nonetheless, the you know the difference in that payment we're going to go is as follows but it's $222 per month the the word that i want to focus on here is allowable allowable is the key word here so a conventional lender is subject to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guidelines which states that they can only accept a maximum seller contribution of 2% of the sales price okay so they are capped in what they can receive, no matter what the builder or seller or agent would want to give. They have certain limitations of what can be accepted in the conventional world. Marshall Reddick private loans are not sold off. Hence, we are not subject to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac restrictions. So Marshall Reddick, um, we have a prearranged agreement that allows us to take significantly more concessions from the builder to get the private loan rates that we're advertising here. And we're gonna break this down a little bit further, but <clears throat> basically there is no limit. And as you can see, kind of, kind of recapping, the difference that you see in that payment is $22, $222 per month, which is essentially just you know straight cash flow. So. Thanks, Vince. Yeah, really important to understand that maximum allowable contribution. Um, which we are not subject to when it comes to our private financing. And uh, with that said, I'm going to dive into the actual financing programs that we've been able to put together out of this partnership. So we have two options available, right? They are 70% loan to value maximum. Um, we, this means, of course, a 30% down payment, as Vince mentioned. You're certainly welcome to put more down if you'd like, which is actually pretty common. We have a lot of people coming off 1031 exchanges um, that you know put 50% down. So that's just the maximum loan to value, right? You can't get any lower than that. Um, conventional financing is always an option, right? But the conventional lend lender today, at least in how this is structured, right, based on the maximum contributions they can take, can't get you a no cost to the buyer loan at the interest rates that we can simply because we can take a larger interest rate buy down than is allowable for the conventional lender. So these loan programs that I'm going to be discussing now are Marshall Reddick specials created by or out of this partnership. These two options apply only, I'm going to repeat, apply only in non-owner occupied purchase transactions only. We have two options that we've pre-arranged or put together on your behalf. One of them is an adjustable rate or an arm, and the other is an interest-only balloon. And I'm going to break both of those down, but I want to make sure that, that everyone is clear that the payment APRs and loan fees I'm going to be discussing on these Marshall Reddick specials are based on a loan amount of $350,000 to kind of give you a baseline. So the 5-1 arm, it is a 30-year loan. It's not a 30-year fixed loan, but it carries a fixed 5.25% interest rate for the first five years. The remaining 25 years are variable. 
This is an amortized loan. So your payment there at 1933, again, based on a $350,000 loan amount, includes principal and interest. There is a $10,500 loan fee associated. And as the loan amount increases, so does the loan fee. I've got 3% listed there below. That is the loan fee to be able to obtain this interest rate. And as we get into the further incentives, we've got that loan fee covered on your behalf too. The second option that we put together um, is slightly different. So this is only a five-year loan, right? It's a slight bit higher on the interest rate at 5.75, but it is fixed for the full five-year term. There is a balloon payment at the end of the term, and the payments here are interest only. So although the interest rate is higher, your monthly payment is lower. And the reason for that is that there is no principal being paid alongside as there would be in the arm. The loan fee is a little bit lower, 7,000 here. And again, that is 2% of our hypothetical $350,000 loan amount in this scenario. Now, I get questions all the time and I wanna dive right to those. Can you explain the five and the one in the five one arm? And the bottom line here is that the five in the five one indicates the period of time in years that the loan is fixed. The one represents um, how often per year that the loan will adjust after the fixed period. So understand again that you're gonna have five years of fixed in this loan. If rates stay low, right? You can keep this loan for 30 years. It's going to adjust, however, after year five, starting with year six and adjust thereafter every year. Moving on to the other option we had in terms of the next question, what is a balloon payment? A balloon payment is de uh, described as a large payment, um, but in our scenario, we're using it that the remaining principal balance must be paid off at the end of the term. Right, that can happen in a number of ways. You can certainly refinance the property, which I suspect most people will do, taking advantage of lower interest rates as they come down. Um, but you can also do so by selling the property, or you can also do so by writing a check and simply paying off the balance of the loan at the balloon period. Again, in that interest only option, it's fixed for five years and your balloon payment is not until month 60. The rates quoted, respectively, the 5.25 and the 5.75, that's for the arm and the interest only balloon, right? These require a 6% of the loan amount contribution from the seller. Going back to what Vince talked about, the conventional lender cannot accept this contribution. This is against the Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac guidelines. Marshall Reddick's private financing, however, is not subject to those same restrictions. And this is how we are able to get to these rates that CMG or any other conventional lender cannot get to today. Additionally, the no cost to buyer nature of these programs, right, require a $10,000 closing cost contribution from the seller. When we get to the incentives offered as a part of this strategic partnership, you are going to see that in addition to the six point interest rate buy down, we are also obtaining a $10,000 closing cost contribution from the seller, which will cover those loan fees we talked about a few slides back. Now, I also have a few questions constantly coming in about the nature of the arm after the fixed five-year period. I wanna take a minute to discuss that. So again, in the ARM product, which is a 30-year loan and is fixed for the first five years at 5.25%, you will get your first adjustment at the start of year six or month 61. At that time, the interest rate will reset and it will reset based on the prime interest rate plus a margin of 3%. If rates go high, that interest rate, that fully interest, uh, fully indexed interest rate could be high. Be aware of that. Like that won't happen again until the start of year six. There is a max interest rate increase in that first adjustment of 5%. 
and the max uh, subsequent maximum adjustments upward or downward are capped at 2%. It's also important to understand that the fully indexed rate floor is 6%. So no matter what the prime rate goes to, the interest rate on this ARM loan will never go below 6%. So again, just to reiterate, as we move forward, the principal and interest payment will not change for five years. And you can keep this loan for 30 years. You just get an adjustment and a recast at year six, and then an adjustment and a recast annually thereafter. Awesome, Pat. <clears throat> lots, of, uh, lots of information that we just went over. And I know, as I know, um, there will be many questions, um, but what's really nice is, you know, the private lending team created a very detailed uh, financing guide that goes over the differences of the two loan options that we just covered. So you can see here just side by side the differences in kind of a one section, uh, a one one place. We also have a few more pages to this, and you can find the full guide at the website here. Um, we are also going to be sending out a recording of this presentation and we are going to include this link with the recording of the presentation i will also be doing follow-up calls so for any of you that do have questions we are going to be doing you know one-on-one -on -one follow up calls and i can get this information specifically to you at any time yeah thanks vince the Financing guide is very detailed. It's about a 15 to 20 minute read, but it's gonna answer a lot of the questions that many of you may have. Some examples of what those questions uh, and what the financing guide looks to address is gonna be uh, what I have here on the screen, it is gonna be a cash to close or a loan estimate, right? We talked about the fact that this is a no cost to the buyer private loan. There are costs to the loan. It's just you are not paying them as the buyer. Those are being paid as a part of our strategic partnership. So I won't go into detail here, but just know that for the ARM program or for the balloon program, the interest only, there's gonna be a cash to close and a loan estimate that lines out all of your closing costs, right? There's also gonna be a payment uh, schedule or an amortization schedule if you go with the ARM program, which includes principal and interest, and a lot of other important information that you will need to know if you choose to move forward with one of these creative and unique financing options. Awesome. So <clears throat> what I wanted to cover at this point is the overall buyer incentives offered. So essentially, you know, we've gone ahead and we've spoken about multiple different incentives. So I wanna go line by line and cover each one of those that are on the table now. So first, we're gonna start with the $10,000 price reduction. So this is exclusive to those that sign a contract prior to Christmas, right? So December 25th being Christmas, if you get into contract or get an accepted offer prior to that day, we can take $10,000 off the list price that's been advertised here today. And that would be the 484,900. I think that's for the two story and then there's the 4899 for the one story. That's correct. So then we would be at 4749 and 4799 if I'm That that is correct and we also have the pro formas that we have in this presentation that reflect uh, those numbers, assuming you take advantage of that. Now, in addition to that bonus, we have a $10,000 closing cost contribution. As Pat mentioned earlier, um, it's not to say that there are no costs in these loans, but we have a credit. We have a credit from the builder that would allow us to cover those costs. So you'll see that also in the pro forma of how that nets out and reduces your cash to close or your closing costs. Now, this is the part that I really want to hammer home here. This is the big difference between conventional versus private lending. A conventional lender cannot accept this 6% interest rate buy down. They cannot take this. Essentially, roughly a $20,000 value cannot be accepted going the conventional route. For some of you, um, conventional is gonna be a, a route that you wanna go, but for some of you, pr private lending 
and to be able to take advantages is definitely going to be something that you want to visit. So I want to I want to point that out again. This the only way to take advantage of this six percent interest rate buy down is by using Marshall Reddick private financing. Yeah, and kind of just to take that full story back in the comparison that Vince talked about earlier, right? The ten thousand closing cost contribution, it's on the table for conventional financing. Correct. Right. And you would have to use that in terms of the buy down to get that six point two five percent that we talked about. Correct. Okay. Um, it's just, of course, if Reed and CMG and any other conventional lender out there could take the 6%, they certainly would love to. They just wouldn't be able to sell that loan in the traditional secondary market to Fannie Mae. Absolutely. That is that is 100% correct. In addition uh, to what you've seen on the screen so far, we also are going to offer one year free property management, right? Um, so that's a huge value in that it helps definitely that first year um, get those pro formas looking a lot sharper. So we would be able to take care of that on your behalf. Yeah, and uh, from we'll get into our management, but it's 7% of the uh, monthly rent that's collected. And based on what our rents are, times 7% times 12% is how we quantify that $2,700 value. Exactly. And then last but not least is we have two free initial lease fees. So to explain a leasing fee. So um, whenever properties are purchased and they are vacant, um, we have to place tenants. So when we, Marshall Reddick, place tenants, we charge the owner 50%, 5 zero of the first month's lease, right? This is not just a Marshall Reddick fee. This is a standard property management fee across the board, whomever you work with. Correct, right? Um, and nonetheless, we would be covering the, two for the first two uh, leasing fees, so one for each of the units, right? So we'd be able to place those tenants and cover that fee on your behalf, which also is ultimately gonna improve your bottom line. So as you can see here, if you just start calculating these numbers here, you're seeing a significant savings and incentives being offered um, by a combination of the builder and us as Marshall Reddick, uh, the staff to, to be able to make this happen. And we feel like this definitely brings value to the folks that may be on the fence looking for those deals. Ken, can you jump back in for us, buddy? Definitely. Thank you guys so much for breaking down um, all of our incentives right now. So now we're going to look at what these incentives actually translate into uh, for the numbers. So we'll get into our first example here. This is going to be our two story. So again, when we're deducting the 10,000 from 4849, um, we get to 4749. So this is only for contracting uh, before Christmas. This is our two story. So it's a 5,000 less than the one. Um, and this is going to be the five-year balloon interest only, so no principal payment. Uh, so these are the figures. If we break down kind of what the investment capital is needed, of course, these are minimum 30%. So at that, we're at 143 as your initial investment after your 10,000 concession. Um, the gross rents are going to be 1595 each side, so that gets you to 319. Uh, when we're looking at these figures down here in this last, last box where you see maintenance five percent and vacancy eight these are what we call um, variable expenses so these are things that can vary i like to call them uh you know your little rainy day fun if you will if you own property already um this is kind of the money that you put away for uh, a bad day you know if you have a tenant that does not renew uh, you now have a vacancy that you're going to have to incur along with the leasing fee um, the nicer the property is the less that occurs for a um, duplex like this that is really like kind to a single family home, it is a luxury duplex. Um, you average on, uh, you usually see about two and a half years stay. This is really um, year to year if you usually always, uh, you know, have to incur a leasing fee and then you always have some vacancy. Um, we're building an 8% vacancy, which is about 30 days. That's what you're usually going to see around the early year time now that you're out of the holidays. Um, and maintenance is at 5%. And um, we put that because, of course, it's it's good to get in the habit of saving even in those first few years, even with the warranties and everything being spotless. Because if you plan to hold long term, your 8, 9, and 10 are going to roll around and you should save accordingly for those years. Um, the whole thing is that we want this bottom figure to be in the positives because that means the property is truly self-sufficient. So you are making positive income, but even when you save, um, for the future, 
um, that your property is paying for itself. So we're uh, at the monthly income level, which is uh, above these variable expenses, we're at $697, almost $700 that you're making monthly on this property. When you put aside for your rainy day on these units, you're still at a net 282, so almost about 300 bucks. Um, so this would probably be the best cash flow option that we have for a A-class multifamily in our market. If we look in other markets, New Braunfels, San Antonio, Austin, uh, you're going to compromise the numbers a lot. If you look into the other loan options, you're going to compromise the numbers a lot. If you even look into the pre-owns, one thing that you goes up a lot is these variable expenses. Um, so it, you're not going to get for newer units, you're going to get the higher rent. Um, but also, you know, for pre-owned units, you're going to have more maintenance. So if you're coming in to a duplex that is 10 years old, the clock has already started for a decade. So you're going to have to bulk that up to what I would say would probably be about 10%. Um, so that eats up a lot. And not a lot of people build that into their figures, but it does matter. Yeah, thanks, Kian. Uh, just to before we move on to the next uh, uh, example in pro forma, just want to um, revisit the fact that um, these pro formas were built based on these incentives, right? Um, and so you can see that up in our closing cost section. Um, the closing costs would be estimated at ten thousand higher than this, right? So um, e literally eleven thousand four hundred fifty, um, but we're getting uh, that prearranged ten thousand dollar credit. Um, that's going to reduce them down to a net of the 1450. Yeah, and also for the management fee, you're at, um, of course, zero percent for the free property management, um, and then you're also at zero percent for your leasing fee. So this is exclusive to these specials. The good thing though is that once you come into your next leasing cycle, whether it's a renewal or you're going to lease it out uh, to a newer tenant, is that rents will increase. Our average has been about. Um, uh, $100 the last three years for these communities. So even though uh, those fees will kick in in your second year, uh, you're also going to have rent increases as well. So this helps for really year one, which is the main struggle for a lot of people in this market right now with rates. So we're helping you on the rate side, but we're also helping you with some of these first year expenses that eat up some of the other numbers. So this is the one story. Um, so this is the one that leases out a little bit quicker. Um, this is, of course, with the uh, amortized loan five-year arm. Uh, so we'll look at the figures here and how they, um, they're a little bit different. So this is uh, a little bit more um, total for your investment capital. You're at 148, almost 150. Um, this is, of course, with the 10,000. Um, you're at 479 because remember these were um, at 489. Um, with, with these ones, your monthly income comes to about $435. And your total bottom line, total cash flow is about 20 bucks. So you're almost break even there. Um, and this is, of course, with uh, the other loan product, which is, um, you know, not the interest only. So it's it's not going to be as good on the cash flow. Um, but as as kind of uh, Patrick broke down the differences, it's really depending on what your comfortability is. Same with whether you went for one story or two story. Uh, resale, they both do very similar, uh, and lease-wise, for the rents that we get, um, they're the exact same, but rentability is really what's a little bit different, um, and uh, days on market for even resale is a little bit different. So how quickly it goes um, and how quickly the rents, uh, you know, or how quickly we find a tenant is usually what we see as the little bit of contrast. They're same square footage, same features in a lot of ways. Um, but that would be the main points between each. So, of course, cash flow is a little bit tighter here for this loan option, but you're still in the positives for total. So the property is self-sufficient day one, which is a great thing, even with the amortized uh, loan product. Yeah, thanks. Um, and just a comment, there's no rhyme or reason to, you know, how we structured this in terms of the arm on the one story and the interest only on the two. The, those are for you to decide, right? If you prefer the two story for a little bit lower and the one story for a little bit higher, if you prefer the interest only or the arm or a conventional loan for that matter, right? Um, the, this was just to kind of dial out how this would work in real practice with the incentives that are offered as part of this partnership. So this is some of our other communities. So this is kind of the one that works best for our 
investors really trying to get an even split on all fronts. So good appreciation, good area, good market, good cash flow. This really fulfills everything. So this is why that's the focus of this uh, webinar and kind of the specials that we're currently running. Um, from now to end of 2024, these are a little bit of the other markets that we'll have, communities that we'll have going on. Um, you can go ahead and, and do private lending on some of these. That will kind of take a consult to assess out if some of these fit your time frame, if they have incentives, et cetera. Um, our main ones right now are, are, of course, Jordan Creek. So that's going to be right here in Northern Seguin. Uh, another one that we have is going to be in Shirts. Uh, so this is right along the I-35 stretch. I actually own and am building property in Shirts right now. I love it as another good second to New Braunfels. Seguin and Shirts are really great for that. So those are two options that we have currently, but we have a lot more. So that will really take you connecting with me and Vince here. If you're interested to assess out what are the best options, but uh, Seguin and Jordan Creek has kind of fulfilled uh, what most investors want in the numbers and uh, proximity. Awesome, <clears throat> awesome, Keen. That is great. Thank you so much for for going over that. Um, you know, as we're kind of coming to a, a wrap here, I, I wanted to field some questions. We had a few come in that that uh, I'm sure the other folks would like to hear and. Kian, this one um, I want to kind of direct towards you, but when are these proper properties expected to close? Yeah, so these uh, six that we have available, these are going to be for end of December at earliest closing. We're in the last stage of construction on those to at latest mid-January. Uh, so that last stage, dependent on the holidays, weather sometimes can stretch a little bit, but that would be the range of where these closings would fall um, for this special. Awesome. I've got a couple of questions coming in on the loan side of things. I'll, I'll uh, get those out. Uh, very common. Um, Vince spoke a little bit about this, but the question is, how does one qualify for these special Marshall Reddick loans or for private loans in general? Um, and the bottom line is it's nothing like a conventional loan. We are not going to ask you for tax returns and W-2s and all of that. It's, it's simply irrelevant. Right. If you've got 30 or more percent down, that down payment along with the property's cash flow is what we from an asset based lending standpoint are interested in. It's not that we're not interested in whether you are employed or, you know, whatever your situation is. It's just we don't have to verify all of that because we don't have to explain all of that and, and fit into the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac guidelines that are talked about. OK, um, the other segue or question about that that I get is, um, you know, can I borrow these private loans using a, an LLC? And the comment to there is absolutely we, we don't require personal guarantees on our loans. Um, so lending to an LLC, a corp, a trust or even a self-directed retirement account is totally on the table. And I just got a uh, another question that came in, and um, we we did cover this, but I did want to kind of hammer it home: is can I buy this? Can I buy these properties with conventional financing? Um, the answer is yes, of course you can. We have great resources that can support us from a conventional standpoint. Uh, the one difference is though, as we mentioned on the full incentive package, you cannot take it full full advantage of the concessions. Um, that are on the table as um, at least one of those is exclusively um, allowed only for Marshall Reddick private financing. So uh, we can talk about that on a case by case depending on each individual scenario. Um, but nonetheless, if you are adamant about conventional 30 year fix, we can definitely use that type of financing to move forward. Yeah. Um, thank you. Very important to clarify that. Uh, I'm going to go right back to the question I had before that about um, can I borrow using an LLC? Uh, I had a question come in after that that was asking about um, non-US citizens. Um, and yes, absolutely. The technicality there is that you will need a US tax identification number. So if you're a non-US citizen, but you have a, U a US or a domestic 
a limited liability company or a corporation or even an ITIN number for those foreign nationals who, who are listening, um, absolutely. Uh, and the rates and terms and the incentives do not change whether you're a U.S. citizen or you're not a U.S. citizen. Uh, that's a really good technical question. Thanks for that one. Um, a couple more here, and then we're gonna we're gonna close it up. Um, can I get these rates offered on a refinance of a property I already own? Um, the answer to that is no. Um, you can't. Well, I guess technically you could, um, but you would be prepaying because um, you already own the property. Remember to get this buy down on these rates has to be a purchase money with a willing and able seller. That's the big part about this partnership. It's the willing and able seller that's willing to contribute towards that buy down. So it would make no sense if you own a property to refinance with these because you'd have to buy the rate down. You would just be better off paying the par rate, which is gonna be a six and a half or 7% interest rate. Kian, you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, I, I saw one come through for average vacancy that we see, and I, I may have touched on that. It, it's going to depend on time of year. Um, so for January, which a lot of these will land, you're looking at about 30 to 40 days on average for um, leasing. Uh, the hottest time of year is, of course, starts around March and spring break and ends around August, and that's going to be getting you mostly under a month so you're more along the lines of three to four weeks um, with really the hot spot being summer and all around that time we were seeing really quick turnaround times where some of them were even leased before closing so it will vary but average for these specials will be about 30 uh, to 40 days and then i did see one about builder names that are building these duplexes this is 210 duplexes um, this is a builder that we've been working with for the last decade. Uh, they've built uh, various parts of Central Texas. They always mostly just do duplexes. Um, but yes, two, 210 is their name. Um, I'll, I'll comment there a little bit too. Um, there's more than one home builder. Um, and we saw that on the other subdivisions that are coming up a few slides back. Um, so just to comment that there is more than one home builder in the mix. We've got two other questions we're gonna take and then we're gonna wrap it up. We'd like to keep this to the one hour. Um, the first question is, um, I'm interested, like what's the first step? So Vince, you wanna take that? Absolutely. So essentially what we would wanna do first is to get in touch with um, an advisor like myself. Um, what we would then quickly want to identify is um, what type of financing do we wanna go for? Right. So um, if it's going to be a conventional route, we're going to want to go through the proper channels of getting pre-approved and ensuring that you qualify and meeting all of those, uh, meeting all of that criteria. If you would like to go with the private lending route, you know, there's a, as we mentioned, there's not going to be a whole lot of background checks on that. It's going to be more um, now directed towards Keen to go ahead and identify properties and um, get a contract um, out and signed and agreed upon. And then that's when we can loop in our teammates from the private lending side to go ahead and start getting the ball rolling on um, on those on that front. So ultimately, next steps would be contacting uh, myself or Keen to get started and to start uh, taking next steps there. Yeah, Keen, you want to comment on that as well in terms of like lot selection and one story, two story. Yeah, usually after um, you decide that you want to move forward, we'll go through the lot selection. We can show you the different color variations. These are built spec, so a lot of the interior and, of course, the sizing of the home will always stay consistent. But there are certain lots with different exterior colors that if you have a preference there. Uh, we do have a few bigger lots still available, and we do have uh, three corner lots still available in the community so those are sometimes uh, the attractive ones that people try to gun for. Um, and we have, of course, various ones uh, as we close to end of next summer. Um, we're only going to have the six that are for this special that will be closing now. But if you have a different preference, we can look over the different options and go from there. Um, you, of course, get sent the contract. We review it after um, you get your pre-approval and financing sorted out. Uh, and then you wire earnest money. So earnest money is um, 
uh, going to be 1%. Um, usually that you go with the contract um, and that gets tied up in title. And then we start to do construction updates, um, usually weekly. So uh, that, of course, will get started. And a lot of these are already close to the end. So that won't be uh, many construction updates, but it'll keep you pretty hands-on involved as we do those final blue tape items so that you can get to the closing table, rest assured that everything is finished and all set up for the, the tenants to be moved in and you to get your first rent check. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. A lot, a lot of moving parts there. I would suffice that to round up and say, you know, if you're interested and you want to make a move on something here uh, prior to Christmas and grab a deal and grab these incentives, it's uh, pick up the phone when Vince and Kean call because they're certainly going to be following up with you after this. Um, and then, you know, the last question I'll address and we'll we'll take it from there um, is about getting pre-qualified for these uh, private lending terms and these programs. And the bottom line is that there really isn't much to the pre-qual. What we are going to ask you to do, however, is to visit that financing guide. OK, in order to get a pre-approval letter from Marshall Reddick for these private financing programs, you will have to put in writing that you have reviewed the private financing guide and you are good with the associated rates, terms, incentives and so on. Right. That is um, not really from a disclaimer standpoint. That's just from a we really want to make sure that you understand the nuts and the bolts and you have an opportunity to ask questions and that ultimately your expectation is set crystal clear and correct. We don't want any surprises when we get to the closing table. So everything represented tonight is true and correct, and that's all been put into writing in this financing guide. So again, if you're gonna be working and making that those phone calls and doing all this negotiating with Vincent Kean and you're getting to that contract, that builder is gonna to wanna to see that pre-approval letter, which means that you've talked to um, Marshall Reddick Private Financing and that we've prepared that letter just like a conventional lender would provide so that the builder who's the seller understands that you are qualified to be able to close on this transaction and trust me, when they see that letter from Marshall Reddick, that builder is gonna feel real, real good about accepting your offer. Rolling that all the way back up to the relationships that dial in this strategic partnership. So Vince, thank you. Kian, thank you for taking the time. And of course, thank you to all of the Marshall Reddick clients who make this all possible. We love you. And if we don't talk, happy holidays. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Happy holidays.